Coming up now is the Democratic response to Governor Haley's address with Representative Mandy Powers Norell of Lancaster. Hello, I am Mandy Powers Norell, and I represent the southern half of Lancaster County in the South Carolina House of Representatives. Like Governor Haley, I was also born and raised in rural South Carolina and educated in our public schools. But while we have similar backgrounds, we see things from different perspectives. Governor Haley describes a South Carolina from the perspective of those at the top. I see it from the ground level. And from the perspective of a mother of teenagers in public school and a small business owner in a former textile community, I see hardworking people struggling to make ends meet, senior citizens having to choose between making their mortgage payments and buying their medicine, teachers trying to make do with less than minimally adequate funding, and families grieving after collisions on dangerous roads and bridges. 25 years ago, Governor Haley and I were both finishing high school. She was in Bamberg and I was in Lancaster. Per pupil funding at that time was at an all-time high. Our roads and bridges were some of the best in the nation. Our neighbors had jobs with reliable health insurance and stable retirement plans. The future looked bright. What's changed in the past 25 years? I'll tell you one thing that's changed. During that time, Republicans have been in almost total control of state government. They've had the governor's mansion, the House of Representatives, the Senate, our congressional delegation, and Republicans currently control every statewide elected office. Are you proud of our public education system? Are you satisfied with the conditions of our roads and our bridges? Are you confident that if you got sick, you could afford the treatment? In the past 25 years, our state has declined in almost every category. We've been duped. I grew up in a small textile town. Both of my parents worked for Springs Mills, and I worked there too during the summers to pay for college. But those mills and that textile economy are gone. What's worse is our Republican-led education system is not preparing our children for the economy of today, much less the next economy. In the past two decades, public education has become grossly underfunded. If you find that hard to believe, ask yourself, did your parents have to send packs of paper, disinfectant wipes, and glue sticks to outfit your classroom on the first day of school each year? Republican leaders refuse to even minimally adequately fund our education for our poor and rural schools. And now, they're even refusing to obey a Supreme Court order requiring them to fund public schools equally. This pattern of defunding is no accident. If public education is brought to its knees, then that strengthens the argument for those Republicans who want to divert our tax money from public schools to private academies that cater to the wealthy. Public school has always been the great equalizer. It's the promise that no matter who you are or where you come from, if you're willing to work hard and sacrifice, you can be anything. And when I talk to children in our schools and I ask them what they want to be when they grow up, rich kids, poor kids, kids of all races, they tell me the same thing. They want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, the president. But we know that a child from a low-income family, the chances of them realizing these goals is not as great as it was just a generation ago. A democratic legislature would invest in our public schools the way we did 25 years ago. Democrats believe that our children are our future and that we need to start today to prepare them for success in this quickly changing world. I bet you agree. While Republicans talk a big game about economic development, their policies have weakened our small businesses, our small towns, and our farms. Just one month ago, Governor Haley turned her back on our agriculture community when farmers reeling from the flood ask her for disaster assistance. Her unwillingness to help our state's largest industry has put the future of agriculture in South Carolina at risk. The South Carolina farm community can trust and believe that you have a friend and unwavering advocate in Democrats. You've heard a lot about the businesses that have relocated to our state. Sure, the economy has improved in many ways, but I would submit to you that South Carolina's recovery 
is part of a national recovery happening in every single state, not just South Carolina. January marks the 70th straight month of job growth in our country. So of course South Carolina is sharing in this national trend. It's true that we have brought in several out-of-state and overseas corporations by offering generous incentives funded by our citizens. But what about the local family businesses who are being taxed at the full rate while their larger competitors enjoy subsidies funded by everyday South Carolinians like you and me? That's not fair. What about workers who were displaced when their jobs moved overseas, who are too young to retire, but all the available jobs pay only a fraction of what they used to make? What if we didn't have to hand out hundreds of millions of dollars in tax incentives to convince companies to move to South Carolina? World-class public schools, a healthy workforce, and safe roadways would be far more persuasive incentives than the hundreds of millions that our citizens are paying to recruit these companies now. And speaking of safe roadways, why haven't we passed a bill to improve our roads and bridges? I remember hearing my Republican colleagues say over a year ago that that was the most important thing. Lately, you've heard Governor Haley call for unity, and I agree. We need to start working together to get things done. But what she hasn't told you is that the fighting is within her own party. Republicans in the Senate actually filibustered their own roads bill last summer until it was dead for the year. And while Republicans are fighting amongst themselves, our citizens continue to suffer with tattered roads and dangerous bridges. Democrats, on the other hand, remain unified in our commitment to pass a bill to reverse the decay of our long-neglected roadways. We hope the Republicans will join us. But make no mistake, if Democrats were in control of the legislature, we would have a bill on Governor Haley's desk within days. Republicans have had over a generation, and we still have no solution for our roads and bridges. I love South Carolina, and I know you do too. I especially love living in my hometown where I know the people I meet on the street every day. I know the names of the police officers and the emergency workers who protect me and my neighbors. Our greatness comes from our people, not from our politicians. And we have a moral duty to take care of our people, our greatest resource. Under Republican leadership, though, South Carolina remains one of the most unhealthy states in the nation with one of the highest rates of uninsured citizens. Did you know that we actually turned down $11 billion in federal funds that would have protected health care for 300,000 of our citizens who don't have it now and would have created 44,000 new jobs in our state? Did you know that if you are working but making minimum wage, you would have health care coverage at no cost if the Republicans had only voted with the Democrats to accept these federal funds? And this money would have come at almost no cost to our state either. You've already paid for it with your federal tax dollars, but Republicans said no. This does not make sense for our people who need jobs, and it especially does not make sense for those in our state who are sick and cannot afford to go to the doctor or the hospital. Our state has been through a lot in the past year, from the unspeakable tragedy in Charleston to the thousand-year flood. These events tested our fabric and showed that South Carolinians are made to endure. But the storm is not over for many South Carolinians. While the flag has come down and the floodwaters have receded, as state leaders, it is our responsibility to continue to unify our state and help these affected families make a full recovery. We are woven together with love and compassion for our fellow man. We have so many critical issues before us still. But the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Yet for a generation, we have continued to elect the party that refused federal health care funds, that underfunds public education, and that refuses to address our crumbling roads and bridges. We want you to know that the South Carolina Democratic Party has been fighting for South Carolinians just like you and me. But the Democratic Party has made mistakes too. 
Chief among them is we have let the other side define themselves as the moral party. But the truth is, you cannot lead on moral issues if you mislead on substantive ones. You cannot alleviate the hurts of working people by giving tax cuts to the wealthy. You cannot protect this beautiful earth that God has given us by opening our shores to offshore drilling. You can't lift people up by pushing them down. You can't call yourself pro-life if you are anti-child. And you can't ensure a good education for every child if you take money from our public schools and give it to private schools that cater to the wealthy. If the Republicans could have given us the South Carolina we want and we know is possible, they would have done it a long time ago. It's time for us as a state to wake up from these distractions and misinformation because we are better than that. We are smarter than that. We are South Carolinians. We are a family. And I and my colleagues urge you to come home to the Democratic Party, the party that cares about you and your family. Everyone is welcome here. Good night. God bless you and your family, and God bless the state of South Carolina.